thank you to the uh, Tri-City uh, Collective. Thank you to IMAX. Thank you to Pinnacle Speakers, and thank you to MPI for having me here. Because I'm gonna be talking about a topic that is super important, and that is how to work with and lead people not like you. So quick show of hands, how many of you are working with or leading someone or people who are not like you, however you wanna define the not like you? <laughs> right, should be every single person in the room. Okay, that concludes my presentation, thank you. <laughs> Now, we're changing, and I, when I talk about people not like you, the reason I use those words not like you as opposed to the word diversity is because when I find when people say the word diversity, most people think very narrowly about that. They think racial and ethnic diversity, and that's super important, and we can talk about that, but I don't think that's the only way that we can be diverse. So we're changing in the United States here. We're changing in so all over the world. We're changing politically, we're changing socially, we're changing fiscally, and we're changing religiously. We're changing in every way there is. And when we look at diversity, my definition of diversity is any way you can be different from me, okay? So any way you can be different from me. Do you have children? No. Great, 99% of the time, that question works. I need a, <laughs> seriously, I need a woman with a kid. All right, thank you. <laughs> you do you have children? <laughs> I don't. So you, we're both white, we're both women. Let's just say we're the same age. I can tell you're way younger, don't be a hater, okay? <laughs> just go with me. So let's say we're both women, we're both the same uh, race, we're the same age, we're the same gender. Let's say we live in the same zip code and we even make the same household income. On paper, she and I would look the same. But you know and I know that if you've got kids and I don't, we're actually gonna be very different. The decisions that you make and the priorities and pressures on you as a parent are very different than those on me. And that has nothing to do with race, ethnicity, age, income, zip code, or anything. It simply has to do with parenthood. So diversity comes in many forms. And aside from all the obvious things like generational differences, color of skin, here's some ways that you might not have thought about it from a work standpoint. How about introverts versus extroverts? I'm an extrovert, can you tell? <laughs> My husband is an introvert, he hates people. So, <laughs> he seriously does. I mean, like the doorbell rings and he's like, can you get it? Yeah. <laughs> How about creative versus analytic thinking, right? Somebody who's an engineer or an accountant is gonna think very differently than someone who's a graphic designer. How about morning people versus night owls? Right? How about experience? A meeting planner who's been working for three months is very different than a meeting professional who's been working for three decades. International perspective versus country specific. Communication styles. You know, somebody who would prefer to have a face-to-face -face meeting is very different than somebody who's, who would find that an imposition and be like, just text me. And here's one, I was doing this presentation one time and this guy yells out from the audience, I, I, I think he thought it was an interactive exercise, and he goes, I got one for your list. And I said, what's that? And he goes, Apple people versus Google people, <laughs> right? <laughs> so all these different ways we can be diverse. And one of the ways that you see diversity around us is that companies are starting to get real and brave. Marketing is always about showing people images that they can relate to. That's the number one rule in marketing. Show people images that they can relate to, which is why every ad you're ever gonna see in your life for financial services and retirement features people with gray hair. Because at that stage of your life, that's what you think about. You don't think about that when you're 25, you think about it when you're 45, 55, and 65. So here's some ways that you can see the diversity seeping into the culture all around us. People wanna see the real real. They wanna see people who look like them. Cheerios in the United States is the number one selling brand of cereal. Cheerios did an ad a last year, a television ad, featuring an interracial couple. How many saw it? For those of you who didn't see it, here's what it went. It went like this, white mom, black dad, adorable little girl. And the little girl says, mommy, why do we eat Cheerios? And mommy says, because it's good for daddy's heart. And then the little girl goes over to daddy who's sleeping, who's napping in the, in the living room on the couch and she pours the box of Cheerios on his chest because it's good for his heart. That was it, it's adorable. But never once did they go and check out our cool interracial family, right? They didn't have to, they just showed a family. Speaking of families, Honey Made in the United States, the nation's only graham cracker? <laughs> Honey Made is doing a campaign right now that features no models and no actors, nothing but real people and real families and real, um, real consumers of crackers. So one of their families is a gay couple with children, wholesome dad advertising from Honey Made. They're also realizing that real drives business. For example, 40% of people 18 to 35 have four or more tattoos. 
not a tattoo, four or more. So back to my premise of people relate to images that look like themselves, then if an entire generation of people have ink, shouldn't we be showing that? Well, here's a bank in Philadelphia that is doing just that. And so you could see that this woman has like a cool edgy haircut, but look at her left arm. It's an entire sleeve of ink, and this is a bank.